Hi, I want to welcome you in case it's your first time. I'm Laura Volbentesta and this is Fashion Illustration Tribe. And today I wanted to introduce you to a whole bunch of great art supplies. Honestly, to create a portfolio, you don't need that many. And I have a blog post coming up about that. You only need like five supplies to create your portfolio. And today in this video, I just want to focus on one and it's the gouache. When I went to Parsons in 1995, it was like, ooh, what's this gouache? You know, for fashion, for fashion design, you gouache it for illustrations. I mean, we can use all kinds of paints and things. I had never used watercolor actually that much except as a kid. And let me tell you that if you buy Crayola watercolors or whatever you can buy at the local drugstore or whatever, you're doing a big disservice to yourself, even to your kids. If you're working with five-year-olds, I wouldn't use that stuff. It's really disheartening to use a, and get, I don't know, I haven't bought in a few years, but they usually give you a crummy little brush that looks like eyelashes. And, uh, and the paint has no body to it. Like they look bright and you add some water to them and then you could use them, they're not bright at all. I'm gonna show you today some great tools, none of which are over the top expensive. Cause I don't know, maybe I'm born cheap, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've used the best and so I can compare and I've found some affordable alternatives that are fabulous. And frankly, when I'm not using super expensive materials, I feel like I have more freedom to just use and abuse and use them up and enjoy them. So I am someone who tends to go for the very, very best quality at the very, very lowest price if I can because I like that feeling of freedom. I don't like to be like afraid to use my stuff. Okay, first off, paintbrush. Um, when I started my fashion studies, we were using sable brushes. I was studying in Paris, so everything was um, you know, French sable. The brushes were like 40 bucks. I could still buy a $40 brush for my fashion sketches. I don't. Um, in my courses, I have a supply cart that you can order from, but you can simply, um, this is Utrecht. I better spell that for you because that's a pretty weird word. U-T-R-E-C-H-T. If you go onto the web and you look for utrechtart.com, you can just Google on there, go into their website, and then you can search for what they call um, sablette. Sablette, as you can tell, sounds like a mini or a, a cheaper version of sable. It's like a sable brush, but it isn't. It's synthetic. Yes, it's different. Syn sable brushes are a little more... Um, uneven, they're a little more wobbly, so they do have a lot of emotion to them. And I certainly encourage you to buy one, a good one, I'll tell you more about that, like a Winsor & Newton one or something, um, if you have the 40 bucks. If you don't, this Sablet brush is like $5 and it's good. And let me tell you why and what you're looking for. It's a round brush, round barreled, meaning this part here is a circle. Okay, so it's round, but the tip is pointed. And this is like the brush. And whether you're doing fashion design or if you're just playing with your kids or hanging out at home, this is still the brush to have. You can have a whole bunch of other brushes with different shapes, but this brush, okay, let me tell you a little bit. I'm gonna tip, dip it in water. Oh, no, 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 I wanted to dry it first because I want you to know that if you're not ordering the Utrecht Sablet, any brush you do get, well, when you buy them, they're usually uh, stiff. They have like this starchy stuff in them that keeps them looking good in the store. But if you're not sure that it's a good brush, you need to squish it around while you're in the store and then press it down and let go. This one just went boom, stuck right back up. Great. Okay. Uh, a lot of brushes that say sable on them, and I'm saying this because I have so many students at Parsons who bought the wrong brushes. I don't know how much they cost, but you know, you push it down and it like stays there. You don't want a brush like that because that means when you go to paint, it's just gonna stay there. This kind of a brush, you see how resilient it is? And even a good sable brush will be resilient that way. So like I said, you push it down and you pop it up. 
I live in the suburbs and our main art store is Michael's, that big chain. Even Michael's, they have these little packs of brushes. They're like five bucks for five brushes. And they do have round pointed brushes in them. So you can, it's Artist Loft is that brand that they have. Okay, and this one is a size eight. I like eight or 10 for like general use for fashion. Basically your brush has to relate to the size of your page, right? Um, I like eight or 10. You can also get a zero, which would be something really small that you could use for like eyebrows or lips. <laughs> and um, you can go bigger too, but I would recommend getting an eight. 10 is tends to be for someone like me who's a little heavy handed or bold. A size 10 might really bother someone who's shy or control freak. <laughs> so size eight brush. Um, and actually I was going to talk about paints, but since this video has gotten kind of long and I know that people like to jump around, you can look up my video about um, gouache and, and paints. And what I'm going to do right now is just take this palette of, um, these are tempera cakes, which I'll talk about in another video. I discovered them totally by accident because I ordered them for my kids. No, I bought them in person at an art supply store one day. And when I got home, I couldn't believe how uh, gouache they were. So tempera cakes. They're great because they have little wells in them. Uh, so you can put water in and it kind of sits. They have tons of paint here. And they come with like primary colors, red, yellow, blue, green, black, white. You wouldn't know because the white's a mess. I gotta clean it up. But the amazing thing about it is um, they have the velvety, opaque, dry kind of texture that gouache has. Whereas watercolor has a very transparent feel that's very sheer. Gouache, you, can, you have a range. You can water it down to a watercolor effect or you can use it Thicker and you get this nice velvety effect. And I want to show you. I mean, I should be holding this probably in the way that's, that, uh, that the brush goes from a very fine point. Of course, this is very wet right now, so it's actually not that fine. Um, and then when you press harder, it gets wider, about as wide as a leg or an arm might be in your drawing. Right? And and then even if a dry brush tip, you can get textural oops, effects. That's something I didn't plan on doing, but as my brush dried up, I thought I'd show you. Um, let me do one more round of just, now it's washier because I rinsed the paint out. But do you see how I can go from very fine, very fine, I am not kidding how fine, using the tip tip and that how it can also get thicker and thinner by applying or removing pressure. This is awesome. And using pure black and doodling like this is priceless. Talk about meditation, talk about relaxation and enjoyment. Oh my gosh, I've been talking for eight minutes. So if you're only gonna get one supply for your fashion croaky book portfolio, I would get this Utrecht Sablet. And I forgot to tell you how to spell S-A-B-L E T T E and also that there's a number 228 228 is the round pointed brush and then the size is 8 or 10 remember I told you um, if you're a control freak don't get the 10 because it's bigger and I would get one of those brushes they're like five bucks and the tempera cakes that I just showed you I have to double check the price but again we're talking like $12 and it's not that I'm only going to tell you about cheap stuff, but you see this illustration back here with the blue background? Tempera cakes. I'm not kidding. You can get great, great, great paintings from those that kit I just showed you. And that was a bigger kit. It had um, eight colors, but you can even just get red, yellow, blue, white, black, green. Um, basically a primary set and mix like every color you need even skin tone you could mix out of there i do have some other recipe for skin that i recommend i will tell you about that in another video but isn't it good to know that you don't need to go ballistic and spend a hundred dollars on a set of designer gouache to start expressing yourself uh -uh -uh. and what you express is even more important than the 
the form it takes. You're like, huh? <laughs> the important thing is to get it out of here and onto there, and I'm here to help you along with that. That's my intention. That's my goal. Thanks for joining me again. Laura Volpentesta, fashionillustrationtribe.com. You can subscribe or you can subscribe here, but if you subscribe to my email list, you'll get a lot more goodies from me. And also you'll see all kinds of resources on the blog and articles. And also if you're just into art and creativity um, for all ages and all arts, you can come to artisyourbirthright.com. I love Instagram, so come on down there too and introduce yourself. If um, I just love meeting up on Instagram. Okay, have a great day. Bye.